All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. The We Play Winter Madness Tournament, the finals continues here. This could be it. Gambit Esports, 2 nothing up right now over OG in these best of five grand finals. They're ultimately competing for that $100,000 prize pool. And as we stress, especially for, between these two teams, they're playing for a $30,000 difference. $50,000 for first, $20,000 for second place. So obviously still good money no matter what. But again, this on top of it all being an online tournament, it's one of the bigger prize pools for an online event that we can recall uh, throughout Dota 2 history. So pretty big deal to say the least. And right now, <laughs> yeah, as we all expected, right? Gambit Esports up 2-0 over OG. No, it's the, the run that they've had in this event has definitely been something. And uh, they're looking to close it out here. We'll see if they can. But we bring back VSJ as well as Gods. Gods, start with you. I mean, this team is just looking unstoppable right now. Holy crap, man. A win here would more than double their lifetime earnings as a team. <laughs> That's <laughs> According to Liquipedia, they have $43,000 in total earnings. This would, yeah, get it up to 93000 So Gambit have been looking incredible. I mean, it, it's so much their drops, though. FNG is just pulled out some incredible tent picks especially. I think that's something that OG have addressed here in this game three. They they take the overall last pick of the draft. Two games in a row, Gambit had 10th pick. And I feel like so many of their games uh, leading up to this, they also had 10th pick. BSJ, what do you think about Gambit? Looking good? Are you still muted or are you just not here? One of the two. AFK. Yeah, okay. Well, we've lost the banana man. It's fine. We'll give him a chance. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're good. Don't worry. Uh, no, Earth Spirit going to be the first pick, though, for Gambit. I'm also noticing Visage is not banned, but how about this opening from OG? The Chen Beastmaster. All right. Things getting spicy. So we saw the Chen uh, in the earlier series, and it didn't really look very impressive in either game um, when NIP were playing it. But maybe OG have a little bit of a different style they want to run. Obviously, Beastmaster is one of the strongest heroes just in general has been banned every game of the series until just now, I believe. So a couple of heroes that we haven't gotten to see just yet. Uh, Earth Spirit, obviously a, a Gambit classic, and then they're going to get their hands on the Visage. So here's my concern for OG. <laughs> when Gambit open with these types of heroes, you know you're going to have that like aura carrier that's coming out, like whether it be the Underlord or the Tidehunter or whatever, just some hero that's going to be able to do that. And then you're going to get the Shadow Fiend. And I feel like those aura carrier type heroes are just really good against Beastmaster because he's another one of those heroes that just really isn't so hot at the five man. Part of me, yeah. well, part of me wonders if OG is going to go for this. We're going to almost kind of match them, but do it faster, right? Because that a Chen Beastmaster opening screams that to me to an extent that we're just going to push your objectives faster than you can push ours. That's true. I think the the Visage has a very weak laning stage. The issue for me is that. Chen is not the same hero he was in the old patch. If this was 7.19 Chen, I'd be like, yeah, you grab a couple early creeps, you push towers, five, ten minutes in, you know, you've taken a couple tier one towers with the siege creeps. But new Chen, I, I mean, you've got a very strong laning stage with his new spell, but it doesn't feel like you push as fast as you used to. You could still build the old way, to be fair. It's, it's, not like, it's just that, that those initial levels, it's not as quickly. But when you get level 5, if you wanted to max out Holy Persuasion, you'd be having the same creeps then. So, yeah, again, yeah. it's he could just pass up Divine Favor, just go the 113 build, 203, something like that. C2. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Um We'll see where, where these drafts go. I feel like both teams leave things very open. Uh, I like that Gambit first picked Earth Spirit. I think I feel like it was very much a block pick. It's been banned, I think, two games in a row uh, between Jerex yeah. um, and uh, Immersion. Both teams have great Earth Spirit players, so it makes Wasn't sense. Was OG banning it, though? Um, I think maybe both teams banned it once. I can't I, I can't. Oh, it was one, exactly. one. Okay, I could swear that I saw OG ban it. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it was one game. I'm also just saying random shit here, so I could be right. <laughs> That's why we brought you on. No. I'm actually fair. I'm looking back right now, and yeah, OG banned it the first game, and then it was banned by OG the second game. So OG okay. did ban it both, yeah. All right. Okay, That's so right on that. I think, um, uh, at least if I know my game, but I think they're trying to set up for some kind of like Tidehunter or something. It's good into the Beastmaster matchup. It's good against Chen. They banned Slark already. Phoenix is out of the pool, uh, which is another hero that can kind of cut through the tide. At the very least, I expect we're going to see one of those really beefy strength heroes. Okay, they just ban it. Um, yeah, I think that would have been like an, a phenomenal pick. And now with the TV pickup, it makes even more sense. But that just means Underlord's open now. And we're ready. Now we'll get the Lich first. Um, yeah. Get their other support. Another... Yep. 
Litro Spirit, strong support duo, makes total sense. Um, also, the Frost Armor is going to be a great against Beastmaster TB. Like, that's all f physical damage right now. We just saw NIP do this earlier, right? Where they picked the Terror Blade against the Visage, figuring, like, okay, maybe this is a way to play around it and, you know, prove to not be enough. Now, it's, the style of Jaffs ultimately a bit different, too. Again, going back to the Chen and Beastmaster opening, but OG, you know, it's again, their back's against the wall, down 0 2. I apologize. Hey, There's something wrong TV with my mic. Though. Is BSG right, we'll five? Yeah, sorry about that. I was like trying to unmute it. It wouldn't unmute for whatever reason. <laughs> well, I was like well, really confused. Had to... Okay, we're back though. We figured it out. Well, welcome back, BSJ. The draft has uh, developed. So you've been here. It's just a matter of being able to talk. Yeah, I was but... like trying to say something, but I, I mean, I'm surprised they gave them the visage. They lost to the Lycan, obviously. Uh, like it wasn't as smooth, I'd say, as you know, Gambit's drafts have been in terms of. It looked like OG was going to be able to kind of master through the timing that that game, but uh, OG, I mean, I don't know, man. These gamut drafts just come together really well. You know, they're trying the Terrorblade as well against the Visage again, but uh, I, I mean, gamut. I'm just expecting them to pick another one of these. I mean, Tide's banned, but another hero such as that that allows them to just tank through all the all the damage that OG has. That's what Draskal was saying. Underlord definitely comes to mind here. I agree, Draskal. I think the Oracle is kind of a... Oracle's tough for me this game, because obviously it's great against their Spirit and Lich. You can dispel, you can protect your allies from magnetize and stuff, it's great. But it just sucks against Visage. It's just really, really bad against Those that birds hero. alone. So yeah. The Very OD. good OD game. Oh. I guess they prioritize this over like the Underlord we suggested with the OD. Yeah. Just feeling it's like, you save. know... Yeah, it's a save for the Roar. Very good against TB. It's good against all their heroes, really. Oracle is kind of annoying because you can get disarmed, but you'll fight BKB, I'm sure. Shadow it's hard for him to get in range. The Oracle disarms like really low range, so it's like hard for anyone. Like once the Oracles walked that far up, I feel like it would have already died to the birds. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's called. Fate. I'm not much of an Oracle player, so I'll take your word for it. It's called Fate's Edict, guys. Come on. Uh, you can I, I, for whatever reason, I can't remember Oracle spells. <laughs> or Oracle's like the toughest then, one. Yeah. Purifying flames, false promise. There you go. Jasko knows. Uh, he's a, he's a real caster right, up in here. Yeah. Nice flex, but okay, you know. <laughs> Weird flex. Weird flex. Yeah. Weird flex. That's what it is. Jesus. Uh, I was like blanking on the word. I was like, what is that word? Nice. Is All right. So word. what's another strength melee hero that buys aura items? I'm thinking. Wraith King. Jesus. No. 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 You won't. You won't. Darkseer for the lane. Darkseer or Sand King, I could see working. Yeah. Hmm. Like a Bristle? Could you go that route? I don't like Bristle all that much against uh, Terra Blade, just like a carry that doesn't really mind the physical damage. Yeah, he's got there... like 13 armor or some crap at level 1. There is Centaur. Centaur is not bad, I'd say. I was thinking Centaur too. Oh, yeah. He's left open. Stampede always fun. Uh, their their wave clear right now is uh, I guess yeah you know, equilibrium they have that going for them and Lich could be decent at that. I wouldn't mind seeing a three position Sven. I think that hero is underrated. Or well, I mean it was being picked a lot at the start, but I think it's kind of being forgotten a bit. I don't know. It's been hit a mid. What what is that? It's thirteen games, forty six percent. So yeah, it's it's actually what is a six and seven record? I guess I suppose kind of where you'd expect it. Okay, this is fifty. Seen a couple of chorus fans, but yeah, mainly is have been that support role. <clears throat> I'm gonna go down on the wire with this reserve. I'm thinking what to ban. We're talking about Gambit's pick, but what about OG? They're they're mid hero. The need. It's gonna be based on like what Gambit wants to pick here. Like that, th there's a lot to think about for this ban, just because it kind of says we're gonna we're gonna also want this to not counter our mid laner or sorry our off laner. Hmm. Ban Skyrath. All right. We'll Top see what OG get. Yep. There is the Razor. Uh, Razor used to be one of those classic heroes that would play mid against OD, and we've seen Topson play a few times. I don't care if it's good or not. I want an Invoker, damn it. What about, like, Night Stalker or something like that? Ooh. Or Gambit. Just throwing stuff out there. Oh, uh, Pangolin! Uh, ah. That's an orc carrier. Right? We were looking at all the strength heroes, you know. That's, yeah. that's a problem. <laughs> I literally went to the heroes tab in Dota and was just looking through the strength category. And no, it's it's Pango. Pango. This Pango. is actually a pretty free Pango game. Their only yeah. real disable is the Beastmaster Roar. 
Well, there you go. The Pango. No Pango, funny enough, has been the only team really picking up this hero in this event so far. So Gambit is uh, going to give it a try up 2 nothing in the grand finals. There's the Topson Clinks. We Easy saw clinks. it yesterday. Did very well. It was in was it was in this same matchup too, right? Clinks were SOD? Yep. It was, yes. And they crushed it that game. Time to find out if that was like how the matchup always is supposed to go, or if that was just a because sometimes little things can really sway a matchup one favor one way or the other. And that game, like the well, Clinks pretty much had all the momentum. To me, standing, I'm looking back at that draft, it was a Clinks with a troll carry, but it also had a Slardar and then a Lich Grimstroke support. It felt like a very gank heavy lineup altogether, especially with that Slardar amp damage. So this is a bit different of a Clinks lineup here. That is true. And Gambit likes to five man a lot, which I, I don't know if Clinks, I, he's definitely better than he used to be, like in team fights because of the burning army, but. I don't know. I, I feel like it'll be harder for him to have impact this game than compared to last time, just because, like you said, it had like this very clear cut. This is where I rotate to. Yeah, you have a Beastmaster, I guess, but that's like not a like he, the Slaughter is much lower cooldown, right? Like it's just constant action, and that's what Clinks likes. But in this case, I think it'll be more reliant on him just completely snowballing the lane. Yeah. So BSJ, it sounds like. Uh, oh, I mean, I don't know. It's, which team uh, do you like? Ah, uh, it's tough. This one's closest draft definitely by far but i'm not gonna end this tournament potentially by going against visage for gambit so i'm gonna go with gambit again not that i want to see a 3-0 but this is too strong gods um i mean i feel like i have to go visage too that's that's my hero but i, I don't say i'm talking, like we have not seen the chen be very successful so i'm curious to see how notel um plays the hero uh but I think OG take a big risk giving Visage away for a second game this series. Gambit undefeated on it, and we may be seeing a 3-0. Who would have thought that coming in? Looking at a 3-0 for Gambit, but they are on the verge with all that momentum in the world. We're going to find out here as game three starts. It's going to be an uphill climb for OG. Took a look at those odds as well. Those were the series odds overall. Uh, OG definitely behind quite a bit. So if you like set odds, want to get your uh, get your money in, put put a bet down. You can go to es.bet and take advantage of the odds that showed up on your screen not too long ago. All right, Draskal though, laning phase upon us. They get the visage again. Yet again, we see a Terrorblade in the matchup. That Clink's final pick. Are you sold? I think this is the best uh, OG draft so far. Uh, like BSJ was saying, so I think it's. It should be the closest game, in my opinion. The last game was still pretty close, even though I figured as the game kind of stretched on that Gambit would most likely have an advantage. This time, it's kind of not so clear, because even though OD is a nice matchup for the Terrorblade in some regards, eventually he's going to get BKB, and when the Battle of BKBs comes out, Terrorblade is pretty much the king. So I think uh, there's a good shot that OG can definitely take this to a game four. I'm not going to count him out just yet. We'll see. The Bounty Room Control. So I'm just going to make sure to get this one on here. Looks like we're setting up for a two for two. Maybe not, actually. Top lane. All right. OG manages to get three. So good job fighting. Terribly not usually a hero you'll see fight for a bounty rune, but he had the Oracle back up. Maybe he didn't realize as many heroes were there. But either way, they make it a three for one, favoring OG. So good start on their way. No tell. What is he going to do here? Is he going to get Holy Persuasion or something? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. I th we saw some teams like doing some creep blocking and stuff to get the wave into tower range to so push back out to kind of like mess up the the guy who's in the safe lane, but uh, didn't go for it. Just saw the pango and decided to run away. FNG saying hi to Jerax. Throughout the frost blast level one and did plenty of damage. Jerax the immediate purge. Make sure he gets out of there. So very quick to it but yeah here's that od versus clinks matchup again saw it yesterday it was a, in the vega squadron match there and Thompson definitely had God, a he's fantastic. getting just bopped right now this is this is looking tough he's trying to push a lane out as best he can it's really annoying landing against clinks because not only does he have an orb but his attack range is like 630 or something it's really long so as od strax could be uh dropping here in his top lane yep there he goes fmg gets first blood yeah, mid should uh, should definitely be favoring the clinks as time goes on. Do you want to? Because yeah, you're actually a little Am bit. Am I way right? ahead of you? You're way time? ahead of me now. Yeah, it's okay. good like three or four oh, seconds. Okay. So maybe pause it and then resume here. So I'm trying to sync back. I meant to res restart or refresh, but we'll try it this way. Be back on sync. All right, I gave it like three or four seconds. We should be good now. All right, cool. So top lane though, indeed, as you predicted. 
They get the first blood, and I believe I heard another kill taking place, so <laughs> we'll get an update on that in a second as we go to the split screen right here with Thompson pressuring f and and once again at the tower, you see at the bottom lane, Seb manning up against Afterlife, but the top lane roll in from Earth Spirit. Going on to Jen. Trying to conclude more up there. Let's take a look. There we go. No till. Soul Assumption nuke. One more attack needed. No, he's going to juke through. There's the Soul Assumption finally coming through, though, and they finish the job. Jerax, can he get out of here? Roll back in, and he too goes down. So it's a two for nothing up here for Gambit. And they ultimately win up here. Dahak with the double kill. Yeah, this is a. Uh... A lot of people forget that Visage was like the original king of Trilance. Oh, another roll in. There we go. It connects on ILTW. Push back. Need a tree, but that's only going to do so much. Another couple of auto attacks, and they get the kill on Terrorblade. So easy execution there. Maybe pause it one more second and then resume here. I know it's a little annoying, but. No, nah, it's all good. I, I want to make sure that we're giving people the quality they deserve. You know, I'm not trying <laughs> to mess anything up. All right, so, but yeah, back to your point, though, about uh, Visage being a kind of a king of trial lanes in the past. Yeah, he, uh, the way that his Soul Assumption works is, like, based on heroes that are taking damage, he gets more charges than a spell. It's pretty low mana cost, very efficient, low cooldown. It's mid lane, we're going to see some uh, bopping here. Oh, God, is Effinite just dead? He might be. Searing out, turning on to him, and Effinite, he is going to survive, but just barely right there, popping a salve and staying alive. But yeah, Immersion doing everything he can, trying to go for the kill on tops, and almost backfired. Onto the OD. Yeah, that was crazy. A really long time ago, when uh, this was just played a lot, you would uh, you would see tri lanes with them because people would uh, just trade a ton of harass, and Soul Assumption became like one of the best abilities in, in forcing pressure in the lane. But when Visage was played as like a core, you really wouldn't get the skill that much in a one v one because there was no point because there was not really much damage being exchanged. You'd go like, you know, one zero two or something at level three mm -hmm. instead of just work on max in the grave shield. But it's it's kind of nice to see like a hearkening back to older days. This is our classic case, though, if one team's up and hero kills 4-1, to one, but the other team's doing much better when it comes to CS and just a slight overall net worth. OG feeling pretty good across the board with how things are shaping up. That perspective, you see middle lane again vanish up on Thompson, but as soon as he comes down and half and nine keeping his distance, so. Did he even glyph the creep so that he wouldn't get the kill with imprisonment? That's just BM. <laughs> like, come on, dude, give him a break. This is a hard lane for OD. It's fun to see that early on, the use of that fortification for purposes like that. Making a play there as, uh, once again, Oracle and Lich continue to fight <laughs> over in the jungle, kind of having their own lane. As we see up there, roll in, Immersion connects on a no-tail, and FNG, he's rotating, they're pinging him out. There's a Fortune's End to put the stun on him, essentially, preventing him from getting close enough, I believe, for the Frost Blast, but he applied the Frost Shield anyways, and they chase down ILTW for the easy kill, and now no-tail is also going to be caught, most likely, FNG. Managed to go down, though, to Oracle, but the, the Grave Chill and Oracle, or excuse me, uh, Chen just accepting death at that point. Double kill again for Dahak. Not much they could do. I mean, like you were mentioning, the CS is still going the way of OG, but, you know, over time, if you keep dying like this, you're still trading a ton of EXP. And even that can be an important metric in the early game to decide who's going to be, you know, taking the, the towers and stuff like that. So even though this Beastmaster is crushing it, in terms of the laning phase, like no doubt Seb is having a, a stellar performance. Still a lot of kills being exchanged favoring Gambit. Mm -hmm. I believe Lich is wrapping around here in the middle lane. They're smoked up, but again, is, is the Lich OD going to be enough even to get the I kill? I don't think so. They probably need a third. Well, it gets exposed now, so I think Thompson I might think be he just aware. wanted the ward. <laughs> yeah, he's still out of vision actually, as we see. So he doesn't know 100% that Lich is here yet, but Thompson, he's, he's playing it safe. It's, Lich, if anything, is missing, has that call, so not going to give a chance. It's okay, though, because it's kind of forcing Thompson to play safe. Like, he's not sure right now what's going to be coming his way. Maybe he thinks that, you know, FNG is maybe sitting there, maybe not, as he is going to currently head back towards bot. But even just giving your mid lane a little bit of relief like that is helpful. We will see a full rotation towards Bob. After life, Swashbuckle hits. Zeb throws up the front row, realizing what's going on. If anything, the stand is ground. Maybe get the turn kill first. Frost Shield is up, and oh, after life, will stay alive as they take out the Beastmaster. So good rotations again from Gambit. Seem on point with that. They're going to need to get to the top lane, though, because there is a dive on to Hawk. Now, TW going in deep. Jerex Fortune's in. Really uh, minor, though, as far as the route goes. He activated it quickly into Hawk. Grave Chill, he just runs. <laughs> he gets pretty fast. A level two grave chill, so not able to kill him. Yeah, that's uh, that thing is like 
one of the most annoying early game abilities because not only does it slow you, but it gives you all the the speed that he took away to the to his hero, so he just freaking bolts away. It's not really much you can do about it. You need a, a fair amount of disables to be able to kill a visage at this point. And he's still level five at seven minutes. You know, sometimes you start these tri lanes and your level six is really late, like ten minutes, eleven minutes, something like that. But his exp is uh, doing a okay. That's a good sign here for Gambit. Immersion setting up bottom, but no till is nearby on that chin. So our spirit deciding it's better not to go. We got medallion early purchase up on the visage. You take a look at this game, and you know, it's similar to all three games. It's uh, it's been OG starting out looking pretty good with the odds, and you, know, you can't blame them with the CS chart and everything how things are looking. If you like set odds right there, you head over to ES.bet, and you can place a bet down once again. But top lane. It's another kill on a Terror Blade. LTW is not having the opening he was hoping for, but more so Visage, especially with that early medallion. Yeah, we're seeing the Visage without even having his familiars do so much already. Yeah, that's really bizarre. I was just going to mention how no familiars and a Lich still managed to kill the safe lane TB. Like, that that's the kind of stuff that shouldn't happen, so I'm assuming he was just overextended a little bit, just out of position. Um, but those are the types of things that just they, they give the Hawk a better game than he needs to have. Like you, you don't want this guy to get off to a good start on a hero that we've seen him many times so far in this tournament just perform exceptionally well. Our spiel's still hanging around bottom lane, but yeah, LTW has made his way bottom now. That metamorphosis is already active. Swashbuckle going to be used trying to keep them away. Gets, gets a disarm. Thanks to that lucky shot as No-Tell <laughs> rolling around him. There's the Primal Roar locking him in place. FNG dies elsewhere, by the way. Looks like he might have been mid lane trying to match up, get some experience against Thompson, but the Clinks makes him pay, and I believe he might have used the ultimate. I noticed that uh, that green diamond is no longer. So a couple of good situations for OG. They're also going to get the tower kill bottom and continue that net worth play. Looking pretty good. Beastmaster with the early on Vlads. So yeah, I, I go back to him, and all three cores of OG are feeling very good right now. And this, this is what I was talking about as well with the draft early on. It's like, I wonder if OG is going to go for more of this. We're just going to push you more aggressively earlier on. Yeah, now with the Beastmaster, it definitely makes sense because, you know, the TB normal rotations is like, okay, I had my meta up, I'm going to walk to the tower and I'm going to hit it. But when you have this Beastmaster at a completely free lane, like you compare Afterlife and Seb's net worth, it's a 1,200 difference in nine minutes. That's ridiculous. That's that's so much. Like he got absolutely hammered in his lane. And I mean, it's fair because Pango is a weak laner and Beastmaster is one of the strongest laners. It doesn't really have anything to do with the player skill. It's just that's the matchup. So they're abusing how free the lane was by just rotating the Terra Blade out of the lane that he wasn't having a great time in, making use of the meta cooldown, and just getting the tier one. It's just efficient. Got it. Swashbuckle spam over and over again. Uh, again, keep the lane pushed out as much as he can on Pango. So we'll save the tier two tower for now. Middle lane tops in. He's fine. He's just going to do a little dance as well as the roll was missed from Immersion. So, and Clink survives. But if anything, we mentioned earlier, I mean, opens up some space for OD. Trying to get some last hits, although now he's going to fly towards the top lane and go for some rune control, which it looks like they're going to get both at the top, and it's going to be two at the bottom for OG. So should be an even split here at 10 minutes into the game. Right now, Familiar is, of course, online for Dahak as he's level 7, using them to farm the jungle a bit, but now they're coming back top lane. It's right now just Oracle. There's a roll again going to be whiffed, though. He's having trouble landing a couple of these. Slows him down. Great job with the purge right, right away at the Fortune's End. But Jarek's lacking mana now. And they should be able to just simply run him down. There you go. Mega kill streak for the Hawk. This is probably the most farmed early on we've seen the Visage yet. Yeah, it's kind of terrifying. But at the same time, this is probably also, like, the best that OG have done in the lanes. Like, you compare the, the Clinks and the OD. Obviously, Thompson comes out ahead. You compare the Beastmaster to the Pango. Seb's coming out ahead. They're even pushing into the Tier 2, whereas the, the Tier 1 in the safe lane on the side of OG still stands. Like, this Visage, he's doing well, but... They haven't really reflected his game in terms of like objective taking. So until that happens, I'm still thinking that OG are feeling pretty confident in this situation. A Clinks, triple wraith ban, power treads. I believe the, we saw him. Yeah, he went that medallion into even a right away solar crest. So we'll see if that's a similar idea. I heard a primer roar back here. Yeah, coming out, Astral Imprisonment. I believe that's a Lich under that as a great Magnetize on top of the oh. Swashbuckle. This is a big chance. Oh, Jumping in with the Rolling Thunder, LTW. He's getting low. Can he center? No, he doesn't even have it. Never mind. They lose one. They lose two. They're going to lose LTW on terribly. Most likely that Magnetize was huge from the Earth Spirit. They dive to kill the Lich, and boy, did it cost them. 
god, that was so aggressive from OG, like going that deep, especially like it's daytime, right? Did did the OD like TP in late or no. did he just not see him? I don't I don't think they just saw him. I mean, he was there with his astral imprisonment to save, so yeah, that, that's the thing that really puzzles me because, you know, Seb is obviously Beastmaster, one of his more comfortable heroes. It's just surprising that he would put himself in a situation like that where if he saw the OD, there's like no way you can go for that roar unless it's on the OD, right? And even then, who's following you up? Like what, what hero is going to be able to, to supplement your gank with damage at that point? That was just a massive overextension from OG. And God, they got absolutely crushed for it. Yeah. Again, Four Earth, heroes in a tier one. Yeah, Earth Spirit just happened to be there, perfect timing, and saw the magnetize, and then the follow up. OG realized that was uh, going to be a big return fire, and they just realized too late. So, Visage, meanwhile, continues to be on top of the chart. He has a helm of the Dominator, I noticed there. So, yeah, great progress being made from him. But, yeah, you pointed out before that fight, at least, I mean, OG, the fastest that, that they have been able to start now, and of course, slowing things down a little bit, but two through four still belongs in their favor when you do look at that net worth chart. So it's a matter of calming that down and making another play with uh, maybe pushing some more towers yourself. In fact, Necronomicon just finished on Beastmaster, and he is heading towards that tier two bottom, it looks like. That's what they're going to go next. It's tricky, though, because, you know, Gambit's ultis are going to be up again. Magnetize, the Rolling Thunder, not really long cooldowns. So every single time they're grouping up for these types of pushes, you have to assume that Gambit's always going to be in a position to be able to defend and or trade. Get a good look at the inventory right there of either side. And the Vlad's on Beastmaster. But Vlad's is also coming on a Visage as we get this beautiful view. Cinematic. Yeah, view. the replay of the mid-fight, man. This was just so well executed from Gambit. I think it was like a three or four-man magnetize at the beginning. And then the rolling, bold, or the rolling Thunder coming through from the Pango to ensure that no one can really escape. That is a nasty team fight. Yeah, and you see the odds swapping back in favor of Gambit as Seb does push that bottom tower in the end. But... Uh, never mind, that was actually somewhere else. That was a mid tower, it looks like. But either way, if you like those odds, ES.bet, you can head over, place a bet on said odds that were just on your screen there. As top lane, Gambit was forced out. Retreat, just going to farm the jungle instead, at least for now, on, on the Visage there. At this point, Jarek's trying to stack this Ancient once again, and see Chen doing the same where another jungle pull nearby. So stacking that up, I'm guessing, for the Terra Blade. Come over and do. He's going to have to, like, uh, have a hero nearby him, though, if he wants to do that or pop meta for it. Those stacks are pretty dangerous for early game Terra Blade if you're not willing to commit the, the Metamorphosis cooldown. Yeah. Because you don't really want to be melee hero tanking, like, a Prowler camp into a bunch of other Ancients. It's pretty rough. And it, even in games like this, like, it's nice to stack for your team. But I'm thinking, like, man, do you really want a meta for an Ancient camp with how Gambit has been playing? Even that seems greedy, right? It's crazy to think, like, how much faster this meta is than the previous one. There's the Vlad's finished, and level 10 on OD as well, so 250 more health to work with on him. Catch an eye on uh, what OD may be building. And then I'm guessing the uh, the Yashikaya, I believe we saw the last time around too. He's but. got the phase drums right now. Okay, he goes to the drums again, okay. I mean, it, it makes sense if you're buying phase like against the Klings. Very heavy physical damage output coming in from OG. The armor is nice, the attack speed, things that OD really likes. Going to see a roll in here looking for Seb. And catch him. Divine Favor comes out, so regen kicking in. There we go with the Frost Shield, though, and Swashbuckle going to be using the back lines, trying to cut off the supporting cast. Jarek's going in, I believe. Did he get a False Promise off? Yes. It's going to save Seb for the time being. Will it be enough? The Familiar's in pursuit? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure he's still dead right here. It's just a matter of can Jarex get out now. It's, okay, Beastmaster survived initially, but yeah, it is too much damage. And now back up here. Klinks is joining the party, though. Puts down his army, so if you're Gambit, you probably want to retreat. Uh, fighting into that. They lost the Lich already. Terrorblade also showing up, so Klink's definitely a threatening target, especially with that army down, and Gambit will respect it. Although middle lane, OD is pushing it in meanwhile. It's distraction. Yeah, and even using the, what is it called, burning army on Klink's, something like that? Uh, so, I just uh, call it the army. <laughs> Yeah, it's, sure. it's a pretty big commitment, you know? Relatively long cooldown. We talked about how Gambit, besides, like, Sanity's Eclipse, all their cooldowns are relatively low. I suppose if you want to count, like, uh, Vermilliers or whatever, those are pretty long as well. It is just so much... It is Burning Army, I was just confirming that. Okay, yeah, cool. Uh, some people are, like, really uh, specific about what you call things, so I try to remember, like, all the names of stuff, but it yeah. gets confusing when stuff changes all the time. 
It's a little harder when we don't have our own control, you know. To, to that too, yeah. We're, we're basically casting off of someone else's uh, <laughs> someone else's stream. So the um, oh, picking up a DD. Are they gonna? I guess they can go for this. They do have a visage with oh, the yeah. the medallion and a Vlad's. They did see them walk across the river at least, so yeah, they already know what's up on the side of OG. Yeah, it's not often you see a gamut get contested for this first Roshan. Usually they're just kind of snowball into it, but OG is here to defend. There's not not many that uh, not many ultis though, just roar basically. Okay, false promise just came back up. Army's not ready though. How well, significant that is if they really need it or not, but they're they are going to give it up. You can tell OG's just running away. They say, yeah, let's let's just not risk it. Let's not give them a big fight and all of a sudden throw this game away. So they, they just give up the Aegis for free in the end on OD. Understandable decision there coming up from them. And the Kaya is almost finished on OD as well as a follow-up there. Crimson Guard for Pango. Top lane chases on. Seb just going to roar and hope to TP out. And it is enough. Good lockdown. Space created. He's going to lose a little bit of his army here, which is annoying. But... Uh... Nonetheless, like when when you're in a position like that and you know you're not contesting Roche, the absolute best thing you can do is pressure a side lane. And if you look at the map right now, OG had top and bottom, both pretty much pushing to a, a tier two position on the map, which means that if Gamma want to do something off of their Roshan besides just walk around and farm, uh, they're going to have to get their lanes pushed out. AC is queued up. 2,500 gold already saved up on this Visage. Again, he's the top farm in the game, and with all these dominant Visage games from Dahak, this is the first time we've seen him just farm this well uh, for his team. So, continues to be scary. Seb is caught again. Does not have a roar to save him this time, although has a hand of God to buy in favor and a false promise. So, they're going to throw everything out to keep him alive. Jerex will end up falling for this, though. So, it's save your teammate syndrome kicking in for OG. Seb does remain alive, gets back to full life after the, the uh, false promise, but Magnetize applied. They're going in. They still want the kill, especially if they kill him after the fact, which it looks like they are. That's going to be huge for Gambit and roll right into the top tier two tower push is more than likely what we're going to see here. Or maybe not. They're they don't TPing. have creeps yet. They're, I think there's a cart or something top that's like blocking the wave from coming forward. Uh, they're going to roll forward on mid, hit the dust on a Thompson. This could be a big kill. Oh, Stop. God. Oh, oh no. The, it hit right at the last second to stop it. Last half a second even, and they do complete the kill. Oh, that's it's so depressing. Yeah. Like I, I play a little bit of Pango myself, and when you get into those positions where you're not quite on the right track to hit the stationary target, it feels so bad. You see the hot going a little deep there, though. However, what what can they do, right? I mean, he's just like, okay, you know, I'll just walk away. <laughs> In fact, he now actually just doesn't take damage. Oh, he, well, he literally does not. Okay, there we go. There's some damage. Sunder allows for some damage, no matter what. And the false pro. Yep, they get the kill. So good chase there in the end and with the sun are able to make the plays but game it doesn't want to give this up even without the message they want to find the end of these eclipse out we know Sunder this time he's going down as a result 45 seconds he is out for now no buyback even if you wanted to clinks will resurrect in a second here but seb also going to be run down and yeah you lose visage you think it's understandable why og felt very confident right there but there's clearly plenty left in the in the barrel of the gun there for gambit and they showed it they even did that without like uh, rolling thunder, you know. That was a crazy team fight. They're even going to be able to catch out Jerex here. They force out the uh, the false promise. Going to see a TP reaction, just going back to base. I mean, if you can turn your position one hero, basically sitting at a tier two and getting like five man into a fight like that, it's pretty grim for OG. Honestly, like it's a one K lead, but. I don't know, it just seems like Gambit have their number. Like, every single skirmish seems to, to favor them. And sure, OG always do great in the lanes. But I gotta be honest, I don't think Gambit cares about their lanes. They no. never win them, and it just doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. It's about getting out of that landing phase, not crazy behind. And that's been one of the several themes for Gambit Esports. They find a free kill on Chen right there. He's just trying to get some vision down. You have the Aegis still on OD for another couple of minutes at least. He has a double damage run currently, but that is going to wear off here in a couple seconds, so... Won't necessarily be able to make use of it as they push, but they are going to go for it. In fact, Avonite, he wants to catch. Oh, my, he's going to catch the clinks. Do they have follow up the roll? Oh, a little early as far as the stun hitting. They have dust, though. Keep on top. Tops in. Running away. Nice job with the slow. There's another roll for the stun. The hand of God saving him initially, but it is not enough in the end. Clinks is dead. So, what a cutoff there by Avonite. He just went all the way around and happened to run right into clinks. 
Yeah, that was very fortunate. I mean, they saw him farming top, obviously. So they, they make the rotation with the hopes that, you know, even if they don't get a kill, they still have the Hawk pushing out the lane, so they'll be able to pressure the tower a little bit. And this game, man, once again, Gambit is showing that they are, they are not to be trifled with. And the, the cool thing about it is that they haven't done, like, the exact same thing every single game. Like, they, they have deviated a little bit from, like, the real five-man death ball that we were seeing earlier with, like, the Tide and the Underlord. Now they're bringing out, like, Pango and stuff, so... Even though functionally the hero offers the same to the team, it's just a difference in playstyle. And, and even with that, they're still able to execute the fights well, their movements are crisp, and, and OG just seems to be like at a loss right now. I mean, does anyone have answers? <laughs> you guys seem to be at a, we all seem to be at a loss, frankly, with what Gambit's doing right here and what they've been doing, especially these last couple of days. A perfect time to talk about it here in these playoffs for the We Play Winter Madness event. So again, they're up 2-0. Here in this best of five, trying to claim the grand finals against OG and make it a clean sweep. But OG, of course, fighting strong. They know about coming back, and we'll see if they're able to do that, do that here now as the game has no doubt shifted. Clinks, he is working on finishing the full Solar Crest. It's an item that he has just liked in general on many different heroes throughout this event, so not surprising to it's see a, that. It's a nice core enabling item. Very nice to be able to put on a hero like Terrorblade in fights. Gives you that massive boost to attack speed. You get some movement speed out of it as well on the armor. Uh, and with the, the TB having BKB, this is kind of the point where uh, LCW can actually stand in the fights. So that when we were talking about early game and why I was not really counting OG out is because it, it, unlike in the previous match where their, their core was countered kind of like even by supports of Gambit, this time around, the Terrorblade with BKB kind of should have free reign. I hope the camera looks at what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> As BKB from ILTW is going to allow them to just beat down Earth Spirit. So we're off. You can tell. Gambit's like, okay, as soon as the BKB wears off, we're going in. And that they do. ILTW, now he's in a little bit of trouble. Has the center still. They lock him down long enough. The false promise allows for a response. Out comes the OD with the Astral Imprisonment, though. Primer War hits the Lich. He goes down. Aphrodite is getting bursted down. The city of the Eclipse comes out. It's not enough damage initially, though. The false promise still keeping him alive. No, he finally falls. But OD also dead. Look at the Hawk just standing his ground in the midst of it all. Jerax popping the Shrine, the Face Edict, the heal. It's just not going to happen, though. And for staying alive, Seb now in no man's land. He he too goes down. No tell. Where the hell were you going? The plan was to die. Well, mission accomplished, buddy. He too falls. Ultra kill for Afterlife on the Pango. Again, another case of, well, they lose one of their cores earlier on, but it just really doesn't matter. Terrorblade, as soon as that BKB wore off, he was clearly a lot more vulnerable. Yeah, it took so long to kill him too. And you can't even really fault OG for how the fight went because, like, they started off, obviously, with the BKB. They took out the Earth Spirit. And then the, the False Promise came out afterwards, and then he just got imprisoned. Like, the fight simply lasted a little bit too long. You want the Roar to come out, you want the Burning Army to go down, you want the heroes to just die in that duration to a point where you can actually just finish the fight. But the problem is, the Frost Shield keeps the OD alive for so long against the physical damage. And plus, you can, like, throw the Medallion on him as well that the Hawk has, and this Terrorblade that is supposed to be able to BKB and hit stuff, I mean, yeah, they can't kill him during the BKB, but if it takes you that long to just cut through one hero, then the fights are not going to be good. Because as soon as your BKB is down, you're just going to die. Blink Dagger just purchased on both OD and Pango. So Gambit even has more jump now to take advantage of and get in there and look for said targets. Meanwhile, clearing out some of the, the jungle stacks as Merchant keeping his distance. But COG smoked up and invis here on Clinks and trying to find anybody they can. And they will find OD. Uh-oh. OD, yeah, caught completely by himself. And he is out for 50 with no buyback. And now FNG also nearby. Going to try to run him down. So one of the few times Gambit has just been caught somewhat out of position, not nearly grouped up together as much as they've been. And OG will capitalize with a couple of kills at least. And they want more. And Mersion's also in trouble. Rolling away. Gets a mech kill. He's fine for now. The urn supplied, but he's still going to keep rolling, though. They're, they're, they're going to continue to pursue. Now, Dahak being there, have to be careful about fighting into that, although two heroes are dead, I suppose. So, again, feeling more confident. They want Vistips. He's obviously the prime target. He is going to drain Clinks with that strafe auto attack. Gets the kill, and it's a snowball effect in favor of OG. So, they are fighting back here. Yeah, the, the Vistage has buyback, at least. Um, the creep wave is pushing down mid, though. I think, yeah, LTW's illusions were still there killing the wave, so that means the back door is going to be broken here in just a second. Really big swing here from OG. Easily going to turn this into a Tier 2 tower. Lich still has 30 seconds left on the sidelines before he's going to be alive. And yeah, that's that's the feed train, I think, BSJ called it the other day. Choo-choo, one by one. 
That happens sometimes when the enemy team has pretty good chase potential, because Thompson was just scouting out like the bonus skills. When he saw Affinage, he just assumed that there was going to be more heroes kind of in the vicinity, and it just was a domino effect, basically. So OG wants to take as much as they can out of this. Knowing the Visage is still going to stay dead at least for another 20 seconds, unless he buys back, so forcing that too could be nice. But either way, they get the Tier 3. Will they hang around for the melee? It seems a bit risky. They are going to fall back. But OG, the first team to break base, did not see that one coming with the way these last five minutes or so have been going. But OG, again, showing they can definitely fight. And, and Terrorblade, I think, is the biggest thing to keep in mind, too. We cannot forget about him and how he will be a threat, continue to be as the game moves on here. Yeah, it's, it's the difference between the Terrorblade just being able to tee off into someone as opposed to, like, getting bounced up in the air by rolling thunder and in prison and all that other annoying stuff after your BKB wears off. The big difference is, like, just being able to hit a target that you can actually kill when you're magic immune or, you know, the enemy core not having its entire team to back him up. So I think that Illusion on LTW literally just faded. Okay, there's a creep here. The Chen is uh, scouting it out with the golems, so they do know what is up roar is available again though no burning army that's a big ultimate to have in this rush fight and they might not even make it in time this thing is dying fast it is it is dying fast and Economicon creeps wrapping around Beastmaster trying to go for the flank position. He primal with somebody down there. Looks like Affinage caught. Thompson beating down to Hawk. Meanwhile, Dahawk is melting. The Forge's end guarantees the kill. So Visage is out. Has a buyback. Will use it. Rolling from Afterlife. Going on through out Pops his BKB on the Terror Blade. Dahawk just using the familiars to try to lock them in place. Seb dies elsewhere. Looks like a little bit to the left. That burning army was down, but as soon as it wears off, the Sanity's Eclipse comes out and it just melts. Multiple heroes are going to finish off Chen. They're running after the Clays. He got the False Promise, though, and he's staying alive for now. And that Invis, he's going to turn around with a straight bottom attack. Half nine. Now he's a bit overextended. Puts the Astral Imprisonment up on Terrorblade. Buyback from Oracle. No False Promise, though. Can he save the Terrorblade? It doesn't look like it. It's going to be too much damage in the end. He has buyback, but again, I don't think he has a Metamorphosis at this point. So now Topson, he too will be caught going to the left. They want him over the Oracle. They still might get both even. I see Lich is chasing after the Oracle. They finish off Topson and Gambit once again pushing here at the top lane. Did require a buyback on Visage, but they'll take it. And they are going to catch the Oracle as well for a Man, dieback. This is just insane. There's triple buyback on the side of OG. I think that Klinks and the TD are both, yeah, they're both going to have to buyback. But that's 80 seconds without an Oracle. I'm not entirely sure without meta what uh, what they're going to be able to do. So the Burning Army came off CD like just as the Roshan fight started, which was the only reason that OG were able to take that in the first place. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to really check the CDs as close as I would have liked to. But uh, the, the buyback from the Hawk, securing the fight, forcing multiple buybacks out of OG, and even a dieback. I, I don't know, man. This this seems is really, really tough for OG because you make another mistake like that. It's just over. Well, Thompson caught again. And if he dies again, look at Immersion just soloing him. They kill Notel off to the side. Immersion really wants this kill, but meanwhile, back down here, the bigger fight. LCW, BKB again with that meta. They just run, though. He's TPing away, in fact. He realizes that they're not going to win, so he gets the hell on out of there. And yeah, if you're if you're OG now, you just give up Roshan. It's 100% yeah, going you're their two way. two heroes down. Seb died, uh, I guess, in a little skirmish while Thompson was being ran down. Thompson's actually just... Running down mid lane, looks like he wants to hit the racks because there's a wave bottom, so I think he's going for the rain tracks here. Okay, looks yeah, like it. He will get it. He's going to die for it, though. They know he's here. Water smash going through, but they do not have vision, actually. And he is going to escape, so that was a smart move by Thompson, at least, making the best of a bad situation. Yeah, it's the only thing he could do there. No way you're going to go for some, like, steel. There's sentries all over the Roshan pit. He definitely would have died if he did some play like that. Um... This, this game is crazy, though. I mean, OG are, are trying to make these scrappy moves to get themselves back in, but it just feels like Gambit has kind of had their number. It's a Reaver queued up for Visage. Oh, now he changes it to a Ghost Scepter. Okay. I was going to say, we're going to see maybe like a heart on him. Now he has a link in. So this is trying to decide what he will go next. Um, Lincoln's was what he was settled on last. I suppose there is good reason for a Lincoln's this game. Yeah, Aurora is a nice thing to block. It's quite easy to pop, though. Purifying Flames range is fairly long. Um, I don't know. It's it's one of those games where it's kind of tough to itemize because you have a few problems. You don't want to get roared, obviously. Um, the the Terrorblade is still doing a ton of damage to you, even with an AC and a uh, Vlad's. So you, you still need another way to try to mitigate his damage, at the very least, if no one's going to go for, like, a Hex or anything like that. I assume 
that the OD would eventually buy one, but the last time I saw him he had a plate mail, which leads me to believe he's either going, yeah, probably Shiva's since uh, they already have an AC on their team. All right, well, yeah, now back to the heart, so again, we'll wait, wait for confirmation on that from DeHawk and when he ultimately decides, but he's grouped up with the team at the bottom. I uh, just saw a Basher purchased by Pango as well, so the swashbuckles and just in general that much more potent and going to be threatening for OG to be up against. Middle lane, OG's there, but never mind. I saw Thompson coming from behind and unable to get there. As, oh, my stream just refreshed. Okay. Uh, top lane, Zeb is pushing with LTW, but not going to go all the way. As yeah, so he does get a response out of Gambit. They killed the last tier two tower bottom lane. So Aphidine just up here, though. He's hunting for somebody. We'll find at least uh, Oracle, looks like. And you can just tell OG does not want to risk fighting this. So they are going to lose the Oracle. And he'll be out for 55 seconds again. Still working off of that dieback from earlier. God, that's Earth Spirit with a Guardian Greaves, by the way. Yeah, he's he's got lots of money. Emergent has played uh, very well this game, even going back to the mid fight where he got that really sick, like, three man magnetize. And I have to refresh my stream now because you are <laughs> way ahead of me. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we should just done that earlier. <laughs> I, I meant two of them between the games, like I said. So hopefully we'll be lined up good. after that. Um, yeah, here comes the the push though. Uh, TB finishes up with Scotty. Dowdy has buyback after that. This is going to be if the fight kicks off here and Terrorblade doesn't have buyback. I think uh, Oracles will still be on cooldown as well. Uh, obviously, I can't really check it, but um, yeah, this is they're just letting the racks die. It's it's a heart visage. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> It's ILTW to the right. He's going to get caught. He has a Sunder, but it's just the familiars right now that are burning him down. Emergent rolls in. The Soul Assumption in the Eclipse. Oh he is out. God. 90 seconds, no buyback. Terrorblade just eventually melts. They couldn't even false promise in time. they also going to lose a chance. This could be the beginning of the end in favor of Gambit. Jarek's going to be run down. He, too, is dead with no buyback. And the weak... That's GG. That, that, that's, that's it. That's it. I haven't called it yet officially, but yeah, it's hard to see a world where they're going to be able to hold this and they just go back. I mean, do they have creeps? I suppose they're not able to push just yet, but Thompson may go down too now for this. We even got that. item dropping going on here, Breaky. There's some BM. They're, they're feeling it. They're feeling good for good reason. They played so well this whole event and they are going in and I don't know what's going on here in the chat, but. <laughs> God, I can't believe there was, no, like, I think the Oracle was still dead, right? When LTW died? Uh, he did, was here. Maybe he was, but yeah, clearly the false promise didn't happen. He, he might have been dead, but he was so confident that he wouldn't get chained on like that. I mean, if Thrones under siege here, there's not really much I can do. Seb is the only man alive. Yeah, he was just trying to. That's it. Chaos, GG. That's just GG, man. Unreal. Gambit. LTW buys his full Scotty, walks in, gets chained on without popping BKB, and just dies. No one on the side of OG does anything. I can't tell if that was just him being really far out of position or miscommunication or whatever. Clearly at that point, OG were not like in the lead by any stretch, but that one just, that was uh, that was rough to watch, that TV did. Yeah, it's at a point though too, where again, it, this has just been all game at this series. And uh, it's hard to say anyone that would have predicted a the way that just Gambit played throughout. I mean, we, we knew, we saw glimpses of, we saw plenty of it, and frankly, going to the grand finals, of course, the fact that Gambit was here in the first place, no doubt caught myself, and I'm sure many others off guard, but if you've been watching the event throughout, you would understand how they got here. And we too thought with that Visage ban that it was in the initial game was going to be a case of, okay, now, you know, really show us what you can do, Gambit. They showed it. This is not that one-trick pony team. This is a team that's playing very well right now. Like I go back to, they clearly understand the patch. Uh, better than many teams out there, it feels like, at least. And that is 7.20, and it's come together for you know, a huge earning, a $50,000 portion of the prize pool of the $100,000 in total going their way. And as Goss was mentioning earlier, more than doubling what they've earned as a team so far. Uh, this is a pretty big deal for them especially. So congratulations to Gambit. Very well deserved. And they are your We Play Winter Madness champions with this 3 nothing right here. So, um I believe uh, Gods and BSG might still be around if you want to join us here if you are and give your take on Gods to see you. Uh, Yo, what's up? Well, man, crazy. Gambit's, uh, Gambit's oh. your champions, though. Damn, I did not see a 3-0 coming like that. That's not what you said in Discord. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, this is just fan game one. It's a 3-0. Oh, gee, got this. <laughs> <laughs> it was it. a sick performance, man. I was, I was thoroughly uh, impressed. They were dominant. I mean, it was some great strats, great drafts. I think 
a lot of teams out there should be watching this going into the minor and major. Gambit's not playing at those events, but they look like they should be because they have yeah. a really good understanding of this patch. Yeah, it's it's kind of shocking to hear you say that. <laughs> we just we're watching a team that's not in either of the minors or the majors coming up, but I I am looking out, and I'm sure many others oh, are for Gambit. They they forward. are they are in the minor. Sorry, I lied. They, they're in the okay. Minor. They are in the okay. okay. They did okay. qualify for the minor. So well, there you go. We will get to see them at the minor then coming up here so yeah that, that that's good to hear and obviously we're going to see them there and then moving forward it's yet again another case for the cis region it's it's it seems like another team just always steps up every couple of months to just all of a sudden start shining and right now it's gamma's turn yeah um, fng has always been a great captain it's just you know can you get the players to to trust in your drafts and, and how you want to play the game you know and uh he's found his boys so it's good stuff bsj yeah, I... I just want to say uh, the era of dual lanes might be over. I don't know. I feel like a lot of times when players play pubs, like in a new patch, they kind of like test all these new heroes and their strength and just say, yeah, this is how it feels when I play my pubs. And I feel like there's a lot of cores that Visage bows notably in this tournament that are weak in lane that traditionally in dual lanes will have no success. But Gambit is throwing them in an aggro tri lane or a safe lane tri lane based on whatever is better for the team. And these heroes get away with a greedy start. And these heroes that traditionally struggle in these lanes are fine now because of the way they're playing. So I'm personally interested in the impact that that's going to have on the meta in the minor and major, but also in like pubs and how quickly people are going to adapt to the fact that tri lanes, you know, I may, I may not have to convince or beg my teammates to, to try to do tri lanes, you know, that's just a, it's a big deal. These heroes like visage, like, He's a hero that I kind of just wrote off, yeah, and I feel like most people did. And he, the unsung hero of this tournament. He's one that requires practice, that's for sure. So <laughs> anyone that wants to, you know, take advantage of where maybe Visage is at right now as a hero, definitely get, get to practicing because uh, if you want to play like Doxak has uh, throughout this event, then uh, – it's going to take some time, perhaps, but uh, yeah, we, we are going to see them just next week. As Gaza's pointing out, they, they did qualify for the mine out of the CIS region. So talk about a great time for momentum. They get win a big portion of a prize pool here and now going to compete at said minor event uh, for another $300,000. But, guys, let's also, uh, before we start really wrapping things up here, again, the MVP vote. We mentioned earlier that there's a chance for you guys at home to vote as well uh, here for the We Play Winter Madness tournament. Uh, off the top of your heads, Draskal, we'll start with you. If you had to, to claim one person, I assume it's going to be from Gambit. Um, is there one oh, that yeah. really stood out? It's FNG for sure for me. Not even close. I mean, the players on this team are all great, not taking anything away from them. But truly, like, when you can draft what you want and your players are going to play and you can, like, you, you like figured out your way you want to play the game and you can do that every time and make a team like OG kind of they didn't make him look bad per se because some of the games were actually kind of close but they came in the obvious underdogs and i think most of that is because of the drafts so i'm gonna go fng uh gods what do you think oh man i have a soft spot in my heart for visage pickers so i might have to give it to Daxak, but i, I definitely would second fng as a, a top candidate i'd probably go fng but i'll give Daxak a, a close second i would say whoever came up with the tri lane so I, I honestly, it could be any of those three, the two supports or, or Doxic. I, I just feel like that that is the defining trait for me of all the parts of their draft that like nobody else is really doing and nearly as much as they are. Uh, that, that's like a big deal that they bought into that. Like that's saying like nobody else is doing this to the way we are. We think this is the best way to play the meta and let's all agree and like believe in that. So I, I think whoever made that bold assumption and followed through on it. Yeah, FNG, no doubt, the uh, the leader of this team and doing it well. And uh, I, Personally, I would lean towards the Hawk just because you can come up with the strategies all you want, but ultimately you have to have somebody that can execute that strategy and play the hero ah, well. This uh, isn't as hard as it used to be. Come well, on. What about Meepo? Meepo though, as well, yeah. yeah. I mean, he played several great performances. Okay, I mean, yes, Meepo was actually sick. I can't take that one away from him. <laughs> So uh, for, for me, I would go to, but I don't think there's a wrong answer, frankly. So uh, it would be interesting to see who gets that, you know, the extra $5,000, I believe you said it was, towards uh, said player. But, uh, you no know, team way to do it. Hell, just give a 1000 to each player. I mean, maybe they'll just do that in the end. And they, all, they all played very well, of course. But, you know, I was even looking back here at this event, too, and in the playoffs, they, they had to get through forward gaming, ninjas in pajamas, and now OG – and they only dropped one game in those three series, and even Pavaga Gaming the, the in the playoffs before that, who, by the way, won the other online event that's currently going on uh, over there. So 
all four of their series they had to get through in the playoffs and only dropping one game. And, oh, yeah, their one game they dropped was a comeback from Mega Creeps on top of that. This this team is yeah. next week with the minor. They, they have to be one, of, if not the favorite team at this event, who, by the way, NIP and OG are both there. <laughs> so they to, they're going to get some practice. rematches. Yeah. They went one and three in the group perfect, stage. Though. That's that's the crazy thing is that group stage was actually not that great. They almost got eliminated in the group stage, but, man, they turned it around. Yeah. All right, well, not much else to say then other than Gambit uh, deserves this victory, and congratulations to them once again. So we'll, we'll go down the list right here, give a chance to any shout-outs, any final words from, from yourselves. Uh, Draskill, we'll start with you. I mean, uh, it was just fun to cast, you know. It, I haven't really casted much lately, but uh, this was a great tournament. Really enjoyed the teams, watching kind of the – meta unfold because the patches are relatively new just looking forward to perhaps working some more stuff in the future uh bsj uh yeah i just want to give a shout out uh to the fact that I, I was really confused when i was watching the stream and there were all these promo codes on and they were misspelling bsj the, the entire time so I was, I was wondering what was uh -huh. happening with that but uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess, you know, technicalities happen, the difficulties, that's all that kind of stuff. But no, either way, I, I enjoyed casting. It was fun. Uh, very interesting to get to see a different region, I'd say, like even though there's European teams in this. Like I haven't seen like a heavily Euro European Russian tournament, and this was definitely a different meta, and I love how fast they play. And this is like the type of Dota that even though the games are ending really quick, it, it feels like so much is going on. And I think that overall the meta may be – a bit five-man death ball -y, but it doesn't feel like it's a five-man death ball because the other team can't do anything about it. It's a five-man death ball where the teams like are making some cool plays. So I like shout out to the shout out to these teams for making it entertaining. Thank God. I de definitely second that. It was a lot of great games. It was fun to see the return of OG um, back from their break, playing some of their first tournaments after the qualifiers, uh, falling a bit short, but uh, it's also even better to see that you know there's these teams playing, grinding it out in the tier two scene who are competitive, who can beat OG, can beat NIP, uh, and can beat teams like Alliance. So looking forward to the minor. I, I don't think it's going to be you know as predictable as people think with OG and NIP, the two big names. I, I think there's a lot of good contenders there. Oh, yeah. That, that goes without saying what we saw, especially in this event. So to, to officially wrap it up, guys, I want to thank you always for tuning in. Again, these last couple of weeks have been a blast here. What a way to enter the new year that is 2019 with some great Dota and uh, entertainment at its finest. So congratulations again to Gambit as they are your champions here for the We Play Winter Madness Tournament. As far as myself, Breaky CPK, once again joined by Gods, BSJ, and Draskal. Shout out to We Play as well for putting on set event and providing, you know, ultimately that $100,000 prize pool. But as you see on your screen, first place Gambit taking on 50000 OG will take home 20 thousand and then you got nip and no pango in that third fourth place spot for 7500 each thanks for watching indeed have a good night guys until the next time we see you i'm sure everyone gonna be tuning in for that minor event the pgl bucharest minor that takes place next week where uh gambit will be there as well as og and nip and there's five other teams that should be a great event and already look forward to that as well but gambit your victors have a good night we'll see you next time till then